What's up, it's Chris Heria. Today I'm gonna to show you how to do a handstand. Absolutely anyone can do it of any age. It just takes a little bit of practice and following the right steps. But before I show you how to do it, let's go over some interesting facts about the handstand you may not have known. Now first off, what is a handstand? In the simplest terms, a handstand is done when your only point of contact with the ground is with your hands. And your body is inverted in a vertical position with your feet stacked above itself from your hands to your shoulders, head, hips, and feet. So a little about the history of handstands. The first variations of the handstand were said to come about in the early 18th century in yoga with a pose called the downward facing tree pose. Later in the 1900s, early variations of the handstand started to appear in circus acts. These early handstands utilized a curved back, what we call a banana position, which placed a lot of strain on the lower back. Even into the mid 1900s, the banana handstand was seen being done in the Olympics. And it was not until the 1970s Olympics that we started to see stacked or hollow position handstands come about. This handstand, now considered a proper handstand, removed the pressure from the lower back, allowing you to hold for much longer, while focusing more on balance and strength through your hands to shoulders and the rest of your body as opposed to balancing with a curve in your back by extending your head and feet on one side and your hips on another, breaking the vertical line. Today, you'll see all variations of the handstand being done in different sports, from gymnastics to calisthenics, CrossFit, Circus Soleil, and more. So you might be wondering, what are handstands good for? Handstands are great for building your balance, core strength, and shoulder strength, and even help with bone health, blood circulation, and improving your breathing. Now, why would you want to learn a handstand? Well, learning the handstand will basically unlock the ability to train your shoulders and upper body anywhere, pretty much transforming your body into its own walking gym. And once you've mastered the handstand, you'd be able to move on to more advanced variations of the handstand, reaping even more benefits of strength, muscle building, and balance from skills like handstand push-ups, 90 degree push-ups, and a whole lot more. Now that you learned something about handstands, let's get you to actually hold one. All right, let's get right into it. We're gonna be starting off at stage one where we'll develop our strength in our upper bodies to be able to hold a handstand as a complete beginner. This first stage is all basically done from the ground, so you can do this pretty much anywhere and it doesn't take any strength requirements or prior fitness experience. So absolutely anyone of any age and fitness level can follow along and unlock their own handstand. And to properly follow along with this handstand technique guide, you can get it directly on your phone by downloading the Thenix app in the App Store, Google Play Store, or just hitting the link down in the description below. Now the first progression and exercise we'll be doing is the pike hold. This is gonna introduce you into holding your body in an inverted position and being able to hold a portion of your body weight overhead. So I'm gonna go for it, show you what it looks like, and then I'll break it down. All right, there we have the pike hold. Looks like a very simple exercise, but it's a great introductory exercise to start simulating the feeling of a handstand and start training and building your strength for it without having to hold your entire body weight and deal with the balance factor. Those are things that we'll train separately and eventually get to. And as we master that progression, we create layers to this foundation. That's gonna make the learning process a lot easier and give you a handstand that you'll be able to perform at any time. Now to break down this exercise, you wanna start off in a perfect push-up position, hands shoulder width apart, core tight on the tip of your toes and your body in a straight line from your shoulders to your heels. From this position, you're going to begin to walk with your hands towards your feet, piking from your hips while staying on the tips of your toes. And the closer you walk to your feet, the higher your hips go into the air, maintaining a straight line from your hips to your heels and your hips to your hands, basically making the shape of a triangle. You want to make sure that no matter what, you keep your arms and your legs completely straight and locked out and your core constantly engaged. Once you're at your highest point, you want to hold this position for as long as possible. Make sure that you have a good grip on the ground and that you're really pushing your toes into the floor. You want to envision that you're pushing your body more stacked onto itself. Your shoulders stacked on top of your hands and your hips stacked on top of your shoulders. And it's great that you're training this now as you're gonna need it in the next stages to be able to hold a handstand with your entire body weight. Now, when you first try this, you may not be able to pike so high, but that's okay. The more you do it, the stronger you're gonna get and you're gonna improve on your form. Also, if you have really tight hamstrings, you may find difficulty in getting a really high peak. So just make sure to stretch them out. Now, I want you to train your pike hold two different ways. The first way is gonna be through sets. I want you to hold your pike for as long as you can for 10 to 15 sets with a two to three minute break in between each set. The second way I I want you to train it is to hold the pike hold for up to 30 seconds every minute on the minute for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And after just a couple training sessions of this, you're going to develop the strength to be able to apply additional exercises and progressions like the pike hold shoulder tap, which builds more strength by isolating each arm, as well as developing the strength in your scapulas, the pike walk, which will improve the strength in your core, shoulders, and arms needed for the handstand, and the pike push up, which is a dynamic movement that's going to further build strength in your shoulders, triceps, arms, and core. Additionally to the pike hold, which is an isometric exercise, getting you closer to holding your handstand. 
stand. Also from this stage, you could supplement with weights doing exercises like shoulder press or just holding weights above your head fully extended. And of course, making sure that you're working all three heads of the delts in your shoulders. If you need a shoulder workout that's gonna do that for you, I've made a whole bunch, I'll link them down below. As far as the technique goes for the pike push-up, you wanna start in a pike hold position. From this position, you wanna maintain core and muscle engagement with perfect form and begin to bend at your elbows while leaning slightly forward, staying on the tips of your toes. As you begin to descend, you just wanna come down enough to where you're comfortable at. The first time you try this, you may only be able to go down a couple inches, but the more you do it, the stronger you're gonna get. Eventually, you'll be able to go for full range of motion, bring your forehead or the crown of your head all the way down to the floor and all the way back up until your arms are fully lengthed out back to starting position. When you're doing your pike shoulder taps, make sure you have a solid grip on the ground and you tap your opposing shoulder. If you're finding it difficult to maintain your balance, you can always spread out your legs a little bit. That's gonna give you more balance. Eventually, the more you do it, you'll develop the core strength to keep them closed. When you're doing your pike walks, make sure that you lean your body weight into your hands and press your arms down into the ground while you lean forward while keeping your arms straight. All you need is a tiny little press to bring your feet forward and do it again. Now you wanna work with all these exercises to continue building your strength and technique for the handstand hold. I'm gonna put up a workout you can do that consists of all these exercises in a routine and you can get this workout routine also if you've already downloaded the Thanks app. After a couple sessions of training these movements, you're gonna get more comfortable with them. Eventually you'll be able to upgrade them, turning your pike hold into an elevated pike hold, which places even more body weight stacked onto your shoulders in an inverted position, which will be more effective at simulating and developing your handstand. The elevated pike hold is exactly the same as the pike hold. You're just putting your feet on an elevated surface. Same for the pike push-ups and shoulder taps. You can do them on an elevated surface, except for the pike walks. Just keep in mind, the lower the elevated surface, the easier it is, and the higher the elevated surface, the more body weight and resistance you're applying to the exercise. So master all of these exercises once you've upgraded your pikes and be able to hold an elevated pike for at least 30 seconds and elevated pike push-ups for at least 10 reps. Then you're ready to move on to stage two. All right, so at this point, you've mastered your pike hold and its variations and have gotten some experience holding your body upside down. Now we're gonna be applying that to build some more strength in stage two to be able to hold your entire body weight upside down. And that's why for stage two, we'll be using a wall. The first exercise and technique we're gonna get into is gonna be the handstand kick up. And this is gonna be the introduction to you holding your entire body weight upside down. Now that you have the strength for the first time, I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then we'll break it down. All right, so there we have it. With a handstand kick up, you wanna start off in a runner start position. Hands shoulder width apart, fingers spread out, a good grip on the ground, one leg bent and ready to push off, and the other leg straight and ready to swing up. From that position, you should actually try a little kick up and see which leg is more comfortable. And while you're practicing your kick up, you should also make sure to lead with your hips as you kick up. You don't wanna be fishing with your leg behind you to reach the wall. When you do the kick up leading with your hips, you're gonna come up in a more stacked position, and this is gonna allow you to reach the wall more gracefully with perfect form. And speaking of perfect form, the perfect form of a handstand is to be as stacked as possible and as straight as possible. Specifically, always keeping your arms straight and never bending them and trying to be in a hollowed out position. A hollowed out position in a handstand is when your abs are tucked in, your back is rounded, and you're as straight as possible from the toes to your hips, to your shoulders, to your head, and your hands. So the opposite of that would be having your back arched, causing your body not to be stacked, which ruins your form and your vertical alignment, which makes it a lot easier to maintain your handstand hold. Think of a bunch of books stacked up in place. If they're perfectly stacked, it's gonna be a lot easier to keep them stacked, versus if they're unevenly stacked, it's gonna be a lot easier for them to fall down. And the way that you kick up into your handstand will also help you achieve that stacked position. So with your hands down on the ground, place shoulder width apart, you have a good grip on the ground, and your fingers are spread out. Before you kick up and lead with your hips, you wanna make sure that your fingertips align with your shoulders. You don't want your shoulders behind your hands. If your shoulders are behind your hands, you're already setting up your body to be in an unevenly stacked position. And with the majority of your body weight behind your hands, your body weight is gonna keep ripping your body back down. That's why it's important to make sure that your hands and your shoulders are already stacked before kicking up. When you're in the runner start position and your hands are about shoulder width apart, you wanna make sure that you're looking right above your hands directly in the middle and never look away from that point. Any slight movement of your head, even if you look up or down, is drastically gonna move your body. And that can save you and give you crazy control in some cases if you're really advanced. But if you're a beginner, that's really gonna make you lose your balance anytime you look in any direction. And the reason why I want you looking above your hands is to ensure that your shoulders are still stacked on top of your hands. As you become more advanced, you can start looking lower directly into the middle between your hands and eventually being able to look anywhere the more advanced you get. As you're kicking up into your handstand, you wanna use just enough force so that you're arriving to the wall versus slamming into the wall. And if you do find yourself coming in fast, you can always tighten your body and stretch as hard as you can from the tips of your toes to your palms on the floor and your arms while pressing and applying some pressure to your fingertips. This is gonna slow your body down and help you to arrive 
drives lower to the wall while also improving your form and alignment. And once you're finally up against the wall, you want to solidify this handstand hold. Make sure you're breathing and make sure that you never ever bend your arms. As long as you keep your arms straight and locked out, you're always going to be safe. You're never going to fall on your head because the first thing to come down will always be your feet. And while you're up there in your handstand against the wall, you want to tighten every muscle in your body and get used to being in this inverted position. The tighter your body is, the easier it's going to be to maintain this position and keep your body stacked. When you're ready to come down, all you're going to do is bend one leg first, starting from the hips, maintaining straight arms and straight legs the whole time, and try to come down slow and control your descension as much as possible. This is going to help you and build strength for the later stages. Now that you can handstand kick up, you can basically hold a handstand. You're holding your entire body weight upside down. Now all you have to do is continue training and building this strength, holding your handstand against the wall for longer amounts of time, while also continuing to train the kick up portion as well. Both of these are going to strengthen your handstand and make it a lot easier and less effort to get into a handstand position, allowing you to train more and apply more technique into your training. And once you're at the strength point, you can also apply other exercises like wall walks. After some time of doing wall walks, you'll be able to walk all the way up the wall and end up doing handstands facing the wall. This is going to further train and improve your alignment and practice that perfect handstand position. And lastly, you want to be working on your handstand negative, coming down as slow and controlled as possible. All of these exercises are going to build up your strength and your handstand for the next stage. Now you should be training all of these exercises specifically as a routine. You can also just train the handstand kick up and the handstand hold on separate technique training days to improve the whole time of your handstand. For example, kicking up into a handstand every minute on the minute or every two to three minutes, try going for a max handstand hold for 10 sets. When you're holding a handstand facing the wall, it immediately puts your body in a perfectly stacked position. So the best position to train your handstand against the wall is actually this position. Continuing to train this position will only further improve your handstand. So continue training, master all these exercises, and once you can hold a handstand facing and against the wall for at least 45 seconds to a minute, you're ready to move on to the next stage. All right, so we're ready for stage three. We're gonna be building the strength and balance to acquire the freestanding handstand hold. So we're gonna be using a wall to help us out one more time. And the first exercise and technique we're gonna be getting into is gonna be the handstand finger press. At this point, you've already built the endurance to hold the handstand comfortably against the wall. These next few exercises and techniques are gonna show you how to maintain your balance in a handstand so that you won't have to use the wall. And when holding a handstand, you're really always falling forward or you're falling backwards. So these are the two directions that we're gonna learn how to maneuver. Starting with moving backwards, the first exercise we're gonna get into is gonna be handstand finger press. From a handstand position, I'm gonna pry my body off the wall just with the strength of my fingertips and push my body in the direction where I bring my feet back down. I'm gonna go for it, show you what it looks like, and then we'll go ahead and break it down. All right, so there we have the handstand finger press. While I'm in the handstand, the first thing I wanna do is solidify my handstand position, trying to be as long, stretched, and as tight as possible, squeezing every single muscle in my body. When it comes to handstand holds, it is so important that your feet are always together. So what I like to think of is once I'm in a solid handstand hold, I imagine that my feet are bound together with rope and they cannot come apart. So always make sure that your ankles are touching. Once you're solid, completely stacked, and you feel comfortable, keeping your body tight and as one unit, stretching, trying to get your toes to reach the sky, and trying to push the earth down with your hands. Once you have all this checked off, from there, all you're going to need to do is just press and apply pressure to your fingertips, pressing them down like you're pressing on a keyboard or grabbing a ball, very similarly to how your feet would press down if you start to lean forward. In fact, from this standing position, you can see if I press my toes down, my body will start to move back. And this is the same thing that you want to do from a handstand position. You're going to press down on your fingertips and your body is going to start to move back. A good way to identify that you're in a hollowed and stacked handstand position is to, of course, film yourself, but also to go against the wall, have your hands up like you're in a handstand position and push your hips against the wall. This is the movement and the position that you want to feel when you're inverted to get a stacked handstand position upside down. So practice this movement and master this movement once you can comfortably do this 10 times perfectly in a row and you're actually controlling your body's movement to come down just with your fingertips, not by helping by kicking off the wall, but just with your fingertips, then you're ready to move on to the next technique. That's going to be the handstand finger pulse where we're really going to start to balance our handstand in a freestanding position. So with the handstand finger press, you learn to press your fingers and push your body backwards with the handstand pulse. We're going to be utilizing that, but also the other direction as well by releasing the pressure in our fingertips, feeling the majority of our body weight go to our palms, and that's gonna allow us to start moving into the opposite direction, closer towards the wall. And essentially, holding a handstand freestanding is constantly counterbalancing the opposing sides. Being in a constant state of your body weight slightly falling forward and counterbalancing that to maintain a stacked handstand position by pulsing with your fingertips. When you feel your body falling forward, you press, and when you feel your body moving too much backwards, you release that pressure and you allow your body to come back forward again. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like, and then we'll break it down.
All right, so there we have it, the handstand finger pulses. So to start off, as you can see, I immediately start pressing with my fingers to get my feet off the wall. I don't want to kick off the wall because that's going to give me too much momentum. The tighter, straighter, and more stacked you are, the easier it's going to be to manipulate your body by pressing with your fingertips. The more slack you are, the more effort you're going to have to push into your fingertips to get your body to move in any direction. Once I've pressed off the wall and I feel like I'm reaching that equilibrium state, I'm going to go ahead and stop applying the pressure on my fingertips and emphasize more on my palm. Now there's a latency to this, but after about a second and a half, my body is going to stop moving backwards and going to start to move forward again. And because there's a latency, I want to start pressing again a little bit early before I reach that equilibrium state and time it so hopefully I stop at that perfect balance point. But that's why you have to play with it, pressing, releasing, pressing, releasing. And the closer you get to that balance point, then you start pulsing it, which is a lot more of a micro movement. Now, when you're just starting off, you may only hold it for a couple seconds and that's completely fine. The more you train it, you're going to be able to hold it for longer and improve your balance, endurance, and strength. And eventually you're going to get really comfortable and hold it for longer amounts of time. Just make sure you're still trying to come down nice and slow and control your descension after every attempt. And once you're really comfortable with this, you definitely want to train this freestanding handstand facing the wall. It's going to be more difficult, so you want to make sure to have some more experience first, but it's definitely going to be a lot more beneficial. Even some of the most advanced athletes with the best handstands still train this move, so make sure that this one is one of your favorites. Now, if you want to come down from this position, you can either walk down or you can bring one leg down to the side. And on the arm with the same side, place your hand more forward so it gives your body room to descend. And remember, you want to do this slow and controlled as possible, but if you really master this, this is actually going to set you up for the next stage. Being able to kick up into a handstand anywhere and dismount without needing a wall at all. Now, after some significant training of max attempts every minute on the minute you'll be able to hold this for at least 20 seconds and then you're ready for the last stage stage four all right so stage four the final stage we're finally going to unlock your freestanding handstand you've already developed the strength the endurance and the balance now we're going to put it all together the last stage is more of a safety precaution to build the confidence in your freestanding handstand hold and be able to execute them anywhere once you know how to dismount from them safely so as you already know holding and maintaining a handstand is just constantly fighting the counterbalance to stop your body from falling forward and that's exactly what we're going to be doing with this last step. If you feel more safe, you can try this on the grass. We're going to go ahead and kick up into a handstand with the intentions of getting to the straight vertical stacked position and eventually slowly passing it nice and controlled. Once you've passed that vertical line, you feel like your body's going to fall forward. That's when you're going to decide to shift your hips, open up with one of your legs on one side, just like we did from the dismount with the freestanding handstand facing the wall. It's almost like cartwheeling out of this movement. You're going to go ahead and bring that leg down while shifting the same hand on the same side a little bit up to give your body room to descend. And just like the previous progressions, you want to make sure that you're doing this with your arms locked out. Do not bend your arms no matter what, and you won't fall on your head. So let me just stop right there, show you what it looks like, and then we'll keep going. So there you have it. As you can see, I try to arrive in a perfectly stacked straight line, and once I've passed it, I begin to dismount. Now, it's really important that you only start to dismount once you've passed your vertical point. If you start doing this too prematurely, you're never gonna get your handstand hold. Remember, to hold a handstand, you have to be completely stacked upon your body, and you're counterbalancing the resistance by applying the pressure in your fingertips so that you don't fall forward. If you start dismounting before you get to that vertical point, you're never gonna have your body weight stacked on top. And oftentimes, people don't go all the way up to the top because it's scary, but this is gonna build your confidence so that you're able to freely practice your handstands and never have to worry about falling on your back or even your head. So master this and really get comfortable with your dismount. In fact, for a while, while you're learning to master this, always dismount from now on going forward so that you never get your body weight used to coming backwards. And after training this for some time, you're going to get so controlled in your kick up and your dismount that eventually one day you're going to try this, you're going to kick up nice and slow. You're going to dismount super slow and instead of just dismounting, you're going to press back on your fingertips and you're going to begin to pulse and maintain your handstand just like you do against the wall. Just make sure that you're applying all the steps, techniques from every single stage and your body is completely stacked when you're doing this. You're leading with your hips and not with your feet and you have that hollowed out perfect position. All right, so now let me just show you what it should look like. And there you have it, the freestanding handstand hold in just four stages, a couple techniques and steps, you got it unlocked. Congratulations, I'm super happy for you and I can't wait to see your handstand holds. Definitely make sure to tag us on Instagram, TikTok, or even a YouTube video documenting your journey. I'm sure it will give all of us a lot of motivation. And now that you're able to hold a freestanding handstand, this is actually where your journey just begins. You just open a door to a whole new world. Start bringing your handstands into new heights and even upgrading your handstands into handstand push-ups, 90 degree push-ups, one-arm handstand holds, and a whole lot more. If you guys would like us to make a part two to this video, what to start training once you've mastered your handstand hold, just let us know down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button 
button. We really appreciate it. It helps YouTube share our videos to more people out there and to show my appreciation. If you comment down below within 30 minutes of any upload, you're always gonna have a chance to win some Denix gear. So hit the subscribe button right now with bell notifications on so that you never miss out on a video. We're posting every other Monday from now on at 10 a.m. USA Eastern Time. And don't forget to get the complete guide on how to handstand hold as well as other more advanced techniques like the muscle up, human flag, and full planche. All you need to do is just download the Denix app in the App Store or Google Play Store. Or just hit the link down in the description below to be able to get the Denix app and you're gonna get full access to all our workout programs, technique guides, and daily workouts having you in the best shape of your life. And you'll also be able to join the millions of Denix athletes around the world following our programs, not just looking strong, actually being strong. So I'll see you next Monday, 10 a.m. USA Eastern Time. Mad love, peace out.